Hi, welcome to a new video. Today, we are going to dive into explaining every aspect of the company Johnson's & Johnson's. Before we do that, as you can see, the channel as of now has zero subscribers. I would really appreciate it if you subscribed. Other than that, let's get into it. Johnson's & Johnson's is one of the largest healthcare firms in the world. They specialize in researching, developing, and manufacturing of healthcare products worldwide. Johnson & Johnson owns over 265 individual companies. Some of them are well-known brands like Rembrandt, Listerine, Clean & Clear, Benelin, and so on. It acts as a holding company for these businesses. They provide operational support and financial support to the companies. All the 265 companies that fall under the umbrella of Johnson & Johnson generally belong to one of these three categories. Firstly, consumer healthcare. This is everything from baby shampoo to baby lotion to mouthwash to eye drops and so on. As of the third quarter earning of this year, consumer healthcare brought in $3.5 billion to the company, which is equivalent to 16.8% of their $20.7 billion earnings in the third quarter. The second part of the company is medical devices. This is a sector they are not well known for. This department is everything from sterilization products to blood glucose monitoring systems. Medical Devices Department brought in $6.4 billion in the third quarter of this year. And finally, Pharmaceuticals Department of the company. This part of the company focuses on drugs that help in the treatment of cancer, diabetes, and schizophrenia. The Pharmaceuticals Department is by far the most profitable and brought in about $10.9 billion in the third quarter of this year. So what's the story behind this conglomerate? History this company traces back to the late 1800s. As you may have guessed by now, the name Johnson came from the founder of the company, Robert Wood Johnson. He joined forces with his brothers, James Wood Johnson and Edward Mead Johnson, and the three began producing surgical dressings in early 1886 in a former wallpaper factory. To tell the rest of his story perfectly well, I have to tell you about Joseph Lister, he was a scientist who discovered that airborne germs were a source of infections inside operating rooms. He recommended that they spray the operating rooms to disinfect the rooms before surgeries. To me, thinking about this recommendation, it makes perfect sense, but it did not to the surgeons who said that it wasn't going to be worth trying it. During this time, there were many deaths due to infections following the surgeries. During this time, there were many deaths due to the infections following the surgeries and hospitals were eager to find a solution. And this is where the opportunity presented itself to Johnson & Johnson, and they started making the first ever medicinal plaster that used medical compounds mixed with an adhesive. This was big for the company. It got them running, and sales started to come in, but still people did not grasp as to why they should use antiseptics when dealing with wounds. And in 1888, Johnson & Johnson published the modern methods of antiseptic wound treatment. This was a how-to manual on sterile surgery and how to address open wounds. It was the first of its kind at that time. Fast forward a few years to 1894, Johnson & Johnson started its baby business with the launch of maternity kits. They made these kits with the aim of making childbirth safer for mothers and babies. Also, during this time, Johnson's famously started selling its Johnson's baby powder, which was a hit with consumers around the globe. In 1910, the founding father of the company, Robert Wood Johnson, sadly passed away, and his son Robert Wood Johnson II took over the reins in the company. Over the next two to three decades, everything was stagnant at the company. They were doing business, but nothing significant happened until 1949. In 1949, Johnson & Johnson acquired Ethicon. This was a company that dealt with the manufacturing of surgical sutures and wound closure devices. Following World War II, Ethicon's market share rose from 15% to 70% in one year worldwide due to the high amount of injuries from the war. Around this time, the company also acquired McNeil Laboratories in the United States and Silag Ag in Europe. These two acquisitions enabled the company to gain a significant presence in the field of pharmaceutical medicines for the first time. McNeil in the same year made one of its kind pain relievers called Tylenol, which earned the status as the pain reliever that doctors and pediatricians recommended the most. Over the next few years, Johnson & Johnson went on to acquire smaller companies to diversify its portfolio of companies. Fast forward to 1990, 
Johnson & Johnson opened the first operating companies in China and Egypt. In 2006, under the leadership of the CEO at that time, William C. Weldon, acquired Fizzer for $16 billion. The present day. As of the time of writing this, the CEO of the company is Alex Gorsky. Johnson & Johnson is the second biggest pharmaceutical company in the world. It employs over 135,000 employees as of 2018. All from a company that started in the mind of Robert Wood Johnson to the conglomerate that Johnson & Johnson is today is all due to the principles that started the company in the first place, making sure the products that they make are having a positive impact on the consumer and worrying about profits second. Looking at the numbers, the company has seen a relative increase in revenue. Around 2005, the company was generating around $50 billion in revenue. But fast forward to today, and they have the revenues of $81 billion. Out of the $81 billion that the company made in revenue this year, they made a net income of $14 billion. This is relatively low considering the amount of revenue that they generate. But this is mainly due to the high cost of production and the high income taxes that the company pays out. Finally, to end this video, and as usual, let's look at how much money you would have if you invested just $100 in the company back in the year of 1972. If you invested $100 in 1972, adjusting for the number of share splits in the company has had so far, your current value would be $7,144 with a mind-boggling return on investment of 7,000%. Thanks so much for watching guys, I really hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like the video and let us know what we can change and improve on down in the comments.